Hi there, it's Brian Sebastian, movie reviews and more, women on TV.tv, worldwide TV network, IT 247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, and on iHeartRadio and all platforms around the world. And so this is the special show because I love my Canadian friends. I spe you know, specifically love women who have short, beautiful hair. All right, so who are you, Janet? Where are you coming from? And why are you on movie reviews and more? Hello, Brian. Thank you so much for having me here today. And my name is Janet Lynn. My last name is Morrison. And I am from Canada. I'm just outside of Toronto in a small town called Orangeville. And I just um, had my first launch of a book. I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, maybe not. You can see it in the top corner there. Forever is today. And that's the picture of my daughter on the front of the book. So I'm very excited to be sharing the story with the world and I'm excited to tell you all about it. I love the cover of your of your book and I love the title Forever. Why did you give the title of it and give us a synopsis of what it is? Because the mail is becoming slow cross country in the United States. It's starting to pick up. So I'm kind of frustrated that I can't get friends books because I like I like I'm old school. I like to actually pick up a book music, CD, even a movie thing and show it. I like to do it. And I don't like to do one and done. I like to do it on other shows too. So people can always know what's going on with stuff. I love the picture. I thought that was you. <laughs> and it's your daughter. Wow. That's my 20 year old daughter, Maddie. So the, the story, um, the book is called Forever's Today. And the word today has always meant um, a great deal to me because I've always really been aware of how so many people seem to think that they've got all of this time or they seem to be living in the past. And the past is how you become depressed when you think about the past and like really the past is over. You, you can't do anything to change it. So um, how about living in the present moment? And because tomorrow is not promised, right? So the day, the word today and it being forever, um, they are just all wrapped up in one. And today is your forever moment. It's your forever day because you don't know what's going to happen. So it's all about just reminding people to live in the present moment. You know, I get, I get a little bit bothered when people say, can we talk, you know, next week? And I'm like, next week, we're in a pandemic. <laughs> you know, I didn't do that before a pandemic. I'm like, you know, a lot of people I've talked to today weren't here yesterday, you know, I mean, I mean, tomorrow and, and I, and I know, which is why I'm talking to them because I'm always checking in on my friends around the world and you don't know the story. I saw this coming October 3rd of 2018. I picked Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, uh, of May of 2018. So I'm, I'm far out, uh, let's say forever far out when it comes to things like that, because I can see things that other people can't see if that makes sense. And mm -hmm. the reason why I like, talking to a lot of the authors. I like talking to, I, I love the people from Hashmark. I mean, how, how long did it take you to write your book? And what did your daughter think about using her image on your book? Well, Maddie was really happy about that. First of all, I love working with Hashmark and I did a, um, I wrote the book in six weeks. I sort of wow. just did that thing. I made a decision to do it and then I disciplined myself and every day I wrote and I didn't even know exactly what was going to happen with each chapter I came up with the title of the book first and I had just started running at that time so I was I love to be outside and I was running and I was walking at different times getting used to the running and I I was trying to think of I had the idea for the book but I needed a twist and I'll never forget the day that I came up with the twist. And once I figured out what the twist was, that's when I got really excited and decided to sit down and start writing it. Um, because uh, there is a real big twist and you have to read the prologue and then the book in order, of course, and finish with the epilogue. Because if you don't read the epilogue, you're gonna miss a really important twist. And as far as my daughter, Maddie, um, and how she felt, I have three daughters, so, um, the other two daughters were uh, very understanding and Maddie is the one that um, was the inspiration behind the book. So the main character in the story um, is, is Maddie. Uh, it's still fiction, um, but some of what goes on and her personality and she has an illness. And in the book, the book is about um, love. It's about friendship. It's about all of that stuff and health, of course. And it's really teaching the reader or the viewer about 
um, how to manage your life and just sort of accept what's happening to you and not to freak out and think my life is over just because you get dealt a certain hand. It's about coming to terms with it and getting resourceful and figuring out a new plan. It's as easy as that. You just have to to go down another path. And that's what this girl in the story does. And that's what my daughter is doing. So it's very inspirational. Congratulations on that. I mean, you like I said, your title along, I'm going to start using that forever today because I love that title. Was it, did it just come to you first of all, or something that you had been thinking about for a while? And I'm glad you based a fictional character on your daughter. I think that's pretty cool. Tell her, tell her the black guy from the United States thinks that's cool. <laughs> Mom did that for her. Okay, I'll do that. Um, I, I, I'm a romantic at heart, Brian, and I've always loved that saying, I love you forever plus a day. It's so impactful when you really think about that. Like that's, that's like very romantic and it's true love. And at first, to be honest, I was uh, Googling that title forever and a day and there was a movie in the 70s I believe it was 1974 that was named that and I just thought oh shoot and I was actually very disappointed and then I just started to really think about the words and and just you know sort of um, played with the words and some other words and I and then it just sort of popped out I, I love to write things down I'm, I'm always carrying around notebooks and I love pens and pencils and I'm very old fashioned that way. And I was just writing different words that had to do with um, the ideas in my heart and in my mind. And, and then it just popped out. It's like forever is today. And like I said, I, I love that word today. I had a, I used to have a business called today coaching and it's just such an impactful word. And I'm the kind of person I do live by that word. And if I have an idea to do something, I'm gonna do it today. I'm gonna to do it right away. I get really busy implementing things and getting things done. I'm not the kind of person that says, oh, maybe tomorrow. I like to do it today. I'm not uh, like that either. I'm, I'm like, that's why I'm up all hours of the night doing stuff because we're on different <laughs> zones. There is no break anymore. You know, we have, you know, now we have 7 million views a day and counting and there's so much stuff to do around the world. There's so many people, new people to meet like yourself, but we might not get the opportunity otherwise to do that. And that's, that's why right. me, it's an honor to interview someone like yourself because I, you know, that's what you, how you describe with your book. I can't wait to read your book because it's inspirational. And I totally agree like that. Let's get all this stuff done today. We don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow and we really don't. And I just don't like to waste time. And I'm always jotting things down too. Uh, inspirational quotes that I see because I'm writing, I think for my future book too. <laughs> I, I get oh, one of those things. What? How is this your first book? Um, it is, but it isn't. So um, about nine years ago, um, it was after about three years of writing it. It was more an exercise in. Um, dealing with my past, but I was very interested in getting it published. And uh, nine years ago, publishing publishing has just changed so much. That's yeah. sort of when the vanity, vanity publishing was the first thing that anyone thought about um, when it came to self-publishing. But um, I didn't care about any of that. I've always been someone that sort of goes against the grain and oppositional and defiant by nature. And um, That's me. I came up with this yeah, that's great. I love it. Um, so it was called Surviving 17. And it was about my teenage years because I had it was a very interesting time in my life. I had to navigate a lot of um, a lot of difficult things. So um, I thought it was a very beautiful book and um, it had a purpose uh, different from this one, a young adult novel and just teaching teenagers that you need to have an identity, you need to have a dream, you need to have something that defines you, meaning something that you love to do. Because when you're dealing with life um, and life throws different things at you, you really need something that you, you love. And I don't mean watching TV or going on social media. And for me, it was the piano. I'm a classical pianist. And the, every time I hear piano music or I sit down at the piano and I play, 
I really get in touch with who I really am and I find peace. And so that book was um, through another publishing company and it was very much to do it yourself uh, publishing book and it was on Amazon and I pulled it several years back because I want to relaunch it so I'm reworking it and completely different story based on the same story but with different things going on and I'm going to modernize it so I'm excited about that book coming out too I think that's great how often do you hear someone doing that I mean nobody that I know of that's a great idea good for you I mean it's almost like you're updating something that you started because time is Things have changed and you matured, if that makes sense. So now you have more of a, a novel for that. And speaking of, you know, a piano, um, I'm, a, I'm a drummer, so I played everything but drum set. I marched in a drum bugle corps. So there's a drum corps in um, Rockford, Illinois uh, called Phantom Regiment. They play classical music. So I learned my classical music by listening to them. So Kinski, mm -hmm. Shostakovich, Schubert are my favorite, you know, composers when it comes to stuff like that. Um, I love Russian music, I guess. I really love that brassy sound. And, you know, when it comes to piano, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 wish, I, I wish I was taught piano as a little kid. Instead, I had to teach, I, you know, I taught myself how to drum and then it ended up marching. So who are some of your favorite composers? And the reason I asked, because I have a feeling you wrote like you would be playing. Mm, um, you're right. Um, it's Rachmaninoff. Bach, oh, I love that. That's that's so Schubert, cool to play. Chopin. Oh, those are my favorites. Debussy, and it's the Romantic era. So yeah. uh, I love it. I love playing it because you can just get lost in it, and you you just I feel the music, and so I can just. You, some people don't understand that when you're playing piano keys because they're made out of wood that you can't change the sound like someone would be able to do with a string but it's not true because the movement of your finger just as it moves moves it, it just does something in the air and it just creates this this the special ebb and flow and so when you see a piano player uh, performing you'll see their body moving and their hand just moving it like undulating and it, it really transforms the music so I love to when do it that. comes to I, I think it was an interview I saw on you um because I do so much stuff way in advance because I could do three five shows a day and you know and then I, and I have 12 different co-hosts all women so I kind of book everything compared to that. Uh, it's one of the things where you're right. An author will know if you haven't read the book. It's just like they, you know, filmmakers would know if we hadn't seen the film or listened to their CD. So I'm a completionist. If it's coming to me, it's like, I got to read it. I don't have a choice. <laughs> That's how I look at it. And once, once I pick it up, I've got to start it from beginning to end. I have to, that's the completionist in me. And that's the thing where, you know what? I only have so much time to do it. Let me do it right now because that's it. Uh, so like I said, I can't wait to get your book from Hatchmark because I already know I'm going to read it because the title, like I said, got me. And I love that. So congratulations on that again, you know, and, and I just really like that about that. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> what do you hope ends up being inspired by a book and why? I, that's a really difficult question to answer only because so many people like to put parameters on things and slot things into these neat little packages. And so when people ask me, who's your target audience? I cringe because I don't think that you can do that in society. Everybody is so different. And everyone just has so many compartments to them. And, and it's, I think people are just so complicated in a beautiful way. And so you could read the book and I know you'll love it. Um, a 60 year old man could read it and remember what it felt like to fall in love. The narrator of the story is a 17 year old boy and it's written in first person. And that boy is based on me, um, my, my emotions and my thoughts and that sort of thing. So 
I just think that anyone um, could enjoy this if it's what they like to read. If you love to read and you love stories about the kind of stories that make you feel. And that was one of the reasons that I wrote this book. It wasn't just because of the inspiration behind it. I've always wanted to write my entire life because it just like watching movies, which I also just adore to do. Um, I love watching movies because I love to feel something different than I usually feel. I love just getting into the story. And that's what books do. I, I've always been an avid reader. And you just get pulled right in and you'll cry. I, I guarantee, Brian, I'll, I'll make you a bet right now, like a thousand dollar bet. I'm saying it to everybody that if you don't cry, I'll give you a thousand bucks because it pulls on the heartstrings. And, and again, like I, I had to write this book at this time in my life, it was just the perfect timing for it because I, my daughter was diagnosed with this illness five years ago. And so I have so many feelings and emotions. I, I watch her every day. There's um, a bag in the story and it's like a red bag with a moose on it. And that bag is in my kitchen. So it's a real bag and it has her medications and she takes something like 35 or 36 pills every day. Wow. And um, so I have a lot of feelings about just something like that. So most people would think, or may even read, oh, there's a red bag with medication, but that's not what you'll read in the story. You'll read what that bag means and what the parents, and the people in the story, the loved ones feel when they see that bag and what it does to them and, and the thoughts that it, it evokes. And so I like to get really down and dirty with, with feeling in, in anything that I write. So I hope that that's what I do to people is I give them an experience. I make them feel something because people just aren't feeling things these days. They're, they are, but they're not allowing themselves to truly feel, to get raw and, and to really experience a, a feeling. So I want to help them do that. I agree on that because what happens is I, I hate when people ask us, so what's your demo audience? I'm like, I reach everybody from nine to 86 and I do. And I, and I separate it like this. And, I, and so when I have someone on a show, it doesn't matter who it's geared to because we have the world of fitness, we have the world of fashion, we have entertainment, movies, musicians, and your a book can be for everybody. Even if it's meant for someone, that doesn't mean it won't touch someone else because someone may have kids or grandkids or something like that. So I'm glad you say that because I have to say that all the time to people reaching out. I don't know if this is right for you. It's not really your demo audience. Like, first of all, we reach everybody. <laughs> Anybody who's marched in a band, uh, you know, from not ages nine to 22, because you age out, and then an all age from 22 to 86, I have that audience. No one else can say that in the world, and I can prove it. And so it's one of those things here. We started talking about classical music, you playing piano. It all goes back to the book, because if you, you wrote it like that, a lot of my musician friends would understand where you're coming from, and I think that's great at that point. Mm -hmm. What was, what was really your inspiration and then what did your other two daughters think about you writing this book on your sister since you said they understood? Choosing her to be on the front cover, yes. Um, it, my oldest daughter, she'll be 25 tomorrow. Wow, how time flies. Um, and she is a beautiful writer and it's interesting because my young, absolutely brilliant writer. So my oldest daughter, Cassidy, she um, was my creative editor in this project. And um, I would write a chapter, send it to her, and she would sort of add the seasoning here and there. And it, it's really great to get um, her perspective and the perspective of my youngest daughter too, Eve. Um, there's a couple of different things in the story that um, she gave me the idea for, just small little things. But I think to the fact that I included them in it, and also they love their sister and they're, we're all really close and we've all gone through this experience together. 
And um, I think that that really, um, they understand that. And we're a very creative artsy kind of a family. We all play music as well. And I think that they just understand on some level just automatically because um, they know how much of a, how much love I have for each of them and love is something I've always talked about ever since they were little and um, always talking about helping others so I think that they understand that too like my inspiration for writing it is to help other people to bring awareness to an autoimmune disease that my daughter has um, so many people have illnesses and don't know how to deal with it and yeah. neither do their families. So the neat thing about this is that after I wrote the book, I came up with the idea of starting a foundation. So it's something called the Gilbert Foundation. And Gilbert is the name that my daughter Maddie gave to her liver um, one day. And she, um, it, it's just a cute thing, but we're going to be able to have different events, maybe um, a piano concert, who knows, maybe a talent show. And when COVID's all over and people go back to normal and we're gonna raise funds for the Gilbert Foundation for autoimmune disease. But the other nice thing about a foundation, Brian, is that you can raise funds for any charity, which is a really fantastic thing because um, you know, if somebody has a family member that was stricken down with cancer or you know, they have something else going on, they, we can allocate funds for what is important in, in their life. And it also, it, it'll become a legacy for our family. It'll allow us opportunities to connect with the community and with the world around us, meet other people, because really, what is it all about? It's about relationships, isn't it? And just getting out of your comfort zone, getting out of your house, getting away from the television, away from social media and phones and all of that stuff and connecting with one another because um, as much as I use to myself not really being social because I tend to be kind of shy and quiet um, I realize as I get older that that's just a waste of time it's silly there's so much that people have to offer I mean if you and I went out for lunch right now we would probably sit and talk for hours and I would come away from that experience feeling so uplifted and I would have so many ideas and I'd have a big smile on my face I'm sure and that's what it's all about human connection and helping others and so this hopefully I can bring awareness and show other people that have illness and disease no matter what age they are that they don't have to be a victim that they can see the glass as overflowing or half full but not half empty and just uh, create something new in their life and just go in a different direction and not be stuck on this path with blinders on so I think that's great that makes sense uh, I, I would she came up with that huh Well, yeah, she did. She came up with the, you mean the Gilbert Foundation? Yeah. And the name? Yeah. Yeah, well, the idea for starting a charity was mine, but she did name her liver and she's really into the idea. And Maddie is a very quiet girl too, but she's a fantastic public speaker and she does some modeling. And so she's comfortable in front of the camera and she's comfortable speaking in front of people. So we're actively involved with the Liver Foundation, Canadian and American, and um, we're both uh, offering ourselves up to be able to do keynote speeches or go to different events. Sometimes there's this walk that we go to, it's once a year in Toronto and all these people come together and we do this liver gala walk and there's different things. She's, she's a singer and she's uh, sung on stage um, in front of a whole bunch of different doctors who are going to an event for the liver um, association. And so we're getting in involved and we're not just sitting down and 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 taking it you know what I mean I like that the reason why I was asking because kind of like seven minutes into this interview I was like she's next time I have Amanda back I'm like her daughter needs to be next to her that's oh. what I'm thinking of the whole time so sometime in June and your daughter will be ready 
Uh, I'd love to have you both on if you'd like that. Talking about because well, I, I and the reason for that, there's many reasons. One, I'd like to meet her. Two, I'd like to introduce her to our singers and the stuff that we do. But also, I like what you described at that foundation. I'm wanting to remember if someone has reached out to me on that up in Canada or if it was something something else like that that I might have met and they kind of disappeared because I love business cards. So I keep the cards and I check in on people. I want to say it was that foundation, but I can't I can't validate it right now. So that's something that I, I, I like things like that. They're really, really important. And yeah, your next interview, when you come back on, you, you're bringing your daughter on, Maddie. With you. you got it. She doesn't mind. No, she'll love it, actually. And um, she, she's she got a lot to offer the world. And she's just, she's just a lovely person. So it would be really great for her and for everyone to meet her. And I'm very proud of her. Yeah, the, uh, the girls, I call them the women at Movie Reviews and More, they would love to meet you, too. I mean, they were killing <laughs> you guys. <laughs> they, and that's the whole thing about that. Um, talk about, you know, I like the fact that you wrote it in six weeks. I've been telling a lot of the co-hosts and other people out there, write your stories now. Now's the time to write all these things. This is the perfect time to be locked down to do all of that stuff. You know, what are you doing? What are you doing to help fellow mankind, womankind? What are you doing? It's International Women's Day, by the way, happy two days later, but you know what? It's Women's Month. We're women on TV, worldwide TV broadcast, which used to be the Women's Broadcast TV channel. Uh, so I'm all about helping win, women and gender empowerment. I started that 2015 at the Hollywood Film Festival. So I look up to you guys because here's the thing, movie reviews and more wouldn't be where we are without all the women. It was the women who came in to help. It wasn't the guys, it was the women. And so I, I, I take that very, very seriously. I love that. And this mo this actual, this book, I wrote it um, with it being a movie in my mind. And so I'm, I'm very excited because one day it's going to be up there on the big screen. That's good. I can see that. So that, that gets my mm -hmm. thing on, uh, on a future third show. Cause I, I like to mix in okay. on things like that. Um, especially directors and producers. So yeah, I'm going to think about that one. Because like I said, the title, it's a, just a perfect title. And I understand how it was kind of, whether it was channeled to you as you were thinking about it. I get it because that's how a lot of ideas come to me. So I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it has been, a few people have said, this really reminds me of this movie. And I've heard that so many times and it's the same movie. And so uh, a person um, she's a New York Times bestselling author. She read my book and she loved it. And so she did give it to a Hollywood producer to be shopped in Hollywood. And I understand these things take some time. And so I'm very busy every day, just visualizing it and getting my invitations ready for sending them out to go to the big premiere. And uh, that's what it's all about too, is you have to have fun with your creation. And a lot of people have asked me, you know, after the fact, was it anticlimactic? Did you like, are you still thinking about your book being out there in the world? And yes, definitely. Um, it's not anticlimactic at all because it just takes on a new layer um, every couple of weeks, every few months, every time I do an interview, every time I get a new idea, I've been thinking of perhaps right as the and making a little liver come to life as a little caricature and and um, teaching children about um, it's so important to know what you're putting in your body and to stay away from alcohol and drugs and, and all that kind of thing because it's not good for your organs and I think a lot of people especially children they don't think about that you know they love the taste of candy and pop and cheesies and all of that and they don't realize that what they're eating actually goes gets distributed to the rest of the body so there's a lot of excitement and a lot of different things that you can do and I hope that people listening to this will think about that maybe someone out there has got a book and they felt a little let down because it's just sitting there on Amazon or sitting there collecting dust at the bookstore but they've got to get out there they've got to get active and believe in their book and they've got to um, push it out there a little bit and get people excited about it. So um, I think that's really important. 
Yeah, that's really true. I tell people all the time, it's almost like the shares. Um, it's an average between five and seven shares of when it comes to social media, but 12 really is the match when, with different people, no matter where they are, are seeing it. So like this interview, once it's done, the first thing I do is why I tape it. I put it on nine different social media aspects because not everybody's watching. Not everybody goes to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Some people are on Instagram live. Some people are in Clubhouse right now. Um, so I put it on different ones because I know the platforms and I'm looking at the analytics and stuff. And then you have to constantly be sharing, 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 because there's always eyeballs that haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. Average attention span these days, it's eight seconds, not 10, not 15, eight. That's nothing. So that's why we do it. The reason I can say all these things is because we figured out how to do it with 7 million views a day and counting. Our views never stop. They always go up. They never go down because of just views. So that's why we go by views, not followers. You can always unfollow someone, not subscribers. You can always unsubscribe to something and not like, yeah. don't like something if you don't like it, but you can never view a view. That's right. Yeah. You got a couple minutes left. Talk about your social media links, where people can reach us and then hashtag publishing. Sure. Um, Janet Lynn, so Janet hyphen Lynn, lynn.com is my website and all of my social media links and everything are there. I have Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. I have the Facebook and um, Instagram. So I'm pretty covered that way. Um, and Hasmark Publishing, it has been a really wonderful um, publishing company. So if you're thinking about writing your own book, get in touch with Hasmark Publishing. And they really truly do embrace you as a family member. They call it their book family. And even though my launch was on February 9th, here we are on March 10th. I had a meeting with them yesterday and it was all talking about, let's get you some more interviews. Let's do this. What are you going to do about that? And it's, you don't feel like you're alone having to figure it all out on your own. You've got people that care about your book, They've all read it and they're involved and it's really a great feeling. So thank you, Hasmark Publishing. And I'm so, so fortunate and grateful um, to have you in my life. That's one last thing before we go. Is your, or is your book have the AR in it also? Yes, it does. If you open the front cover, there's instructions on the AR. And what it is, is it's my voice. And it's also my daughter, Maddie's voice. She shares a bit of her story. Right. And um, a lot of people have video, but it is audio. But I just, we have an audio book coming out uh, in March um, on Audible. And so um, I read the entire story and uh, I just really enjoy reading. So, um, yep, we do have that. Congratulations. It's an honor to meet you. And I have been following you. I, I sort of like to slowly but surely look and see what people are doing, what interviews they've been doing. Is this book, is this book worth reading? Once I saw the cover, I'm like, yep, that book's worth reading. It's almost like me picking a movie to talk about. Yep, I already know. There's something about that movie and I'm always, I'm always right, especially when it comes to the awards consideration. Uh, people know me as picking, you know, even down to sound and best editing. I'm watching so many movies, but also now reading more books. Because back in the day, back in the 90s, I was getting three, five, seven books sent to me a day. And I was only reading autobiographies because I was interviewing a lot of those people in general. Now I'm getting different types of books sent to me. And they're very interesting, you know, because before we, we couldn't talk to a lot of the authors unless we saw them in person. Now it's different. And sometimes I may not want to read this book per se, but the person is interesting enough where now I want to read her book. And I think that's the thing about doing interviews. It's just like when you pop down, I'm like, oh, she's got a beautiful hair. I love her background. And forever, okay, I'm going to read the book. Well, thank you, Brian. You, uh, congratulations. It seems like you're doing an amazing thing here for everybody, and it's really wonderful. And thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, the honor is meeting you. Like I said, I'm used to, you guys are the new celebrities to me, if that makes sense. We will go back. I mean, our studio is still open and I don't know, um, I'm always looking to see when the Canadian border is opening because two of my co-hosts, one's in Ontario, one's in British Columbia, they're coming down. So I have a special trip for when we get down. We only have five people in our studio. It's a huge studio, but it's ours. 
and it's gorgeous. And we built it during COVID to be and I like that. So it's never been closed, but we kept it private and we kept it clean because that's really, really important to me. So when you were able to travel, it'd be an honor to meet your whole family. Um, I, I'm inspired I it. and uh, you know, it's, it's touching to hear that. And I can't wait to meet your daughter, Maddie. So that's why I tell mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I told you, tell her I said hi. <laughs> I'll yeah. be to where she may be singing and stuff like that. Who knows? She might be singing on our Dream Weaver Artist Ranch in upstate, you know, up in um, California. You just never know. So these are the things that I put out there, sort of like how you're putting it out there. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, thank you. That's great. One She's more time. Give you social media links, Janet. Okay. So Janet Lynn, just like it shows up there on the cover.com is my website. You can find me in 15 countries on Amazon. And my full name is Janet Lynn Morrison. And if you look me up, you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, and all of those other great media platforms. So thank you. So as I always say to people, if you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours. The world definitely needs it. Janet, thank you so much. I'm Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More, and we will see you next week.